when measuring rates of reaction, it's important to have something to record over time. So something which changes during that reaction over a period of time. Let's take a really straightforward example. I've got a known volume of a known concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid in a beaker. And here I've got a piece of magnesium ribbon. And when the magnesium ribbon reacts, the magnesium forms a soluble compound. So the magnesium ribbon disappears. So what I'm going to do with this one is take the stopwatch, press start as soon as the magnesium particles are allowed to collide with the HCl particles down here, the H plus ion specifically in that HCl solution, as soon as those collisions are able to start, in other words, as soon as the magnesium touches the acid, press start on the stopwatch and then watch it carefully and press stop uh, once it has disappeared. Here goes. In this beaker, I've got some sodium thiosulfate solution. I'm just going to add to that some hydrochloric acid solution. Let's see what happens. This is a reaction where we could adjust how we take that reaction, how we put that reaction together in order to provide something we could measure to deduce the rate of this reaction or at least compare rates of these reactions uh, with different concentrations and different um, conditions. Let's modify this method then. So this time I'm going to add that sodium thiosulfate solution, which again I've measured out, into a conical flask. And the conical flask then, I'm going to stand on a piece of paper which has got a cross drawn underneath it. Okay, so that piece of paper with a cross is going to sit underneath this conical flask. And of course if I look down there now, I can see that cross through the solution really clearly because that's a clear colourless solution. I'm going to add this clear colourless hydrochloric acid solution to that and then gradually as this mixture begins to form that yellowy precipitate, it goes cloudy, which obscures the cross from view. So this is the so-called disappearing cross method. I'll start the stopwatch as soon as I add the hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to add the hydrochloric acid uh, now. Start that stop clock, give that a little swirl, stand it back on the cross and watch and wait. I need to wait until that cross just disappears from view. I can't see it now. So then if I repeat that method with different conditions, that provides an opportunity to measure or compare the rates of different um, reactions under different conditions. This is a second example of um, monitoring the rate of reaction by continuous monitoring. So in this example, instead of a gas syringe with a scale, there's a measuring cylinder here with a scale on it. So the instructions say to add about 10 grams of small marble chips to the side arm um, tube, that's this thing here. So I'm going to pop those straight into there, like so. And then to add uh, 20 centimetres cubed of 1.0 mols per decimetre cubed hydrochloric acid and replace the bung really quickly. So I shall do that now. So put that straight in there like so. Stick the bung on it like that. Okay. So the next thing to notice is that this starts to bubble. And the bubbles go straight into this measuring cylinder.
Another way that we could measure the rate of a reaction where a volume of gas is produced is by using this piece of apparatus, which is called a gas syringe. Now, the gas syringe attaches to the top of a conical flask, just like so. Um, and the idea is then that I'm going to add marble chips, which have been pre-weighed to um, some pre-measured hydrochloric acid solution down here, just dilute hydrochloric acid, I think it's two moles per decimeter cubed, that doesn't really matter in this instance. Um, start the stopwatch and off we go. So here we go, I'm going to add the marble chips, put the bung on as quickly as I can and start the stopwatch and there it goes. And then we can record the volume of gas produced over time. I can see that the volume is getting quite close to 100. As soon as it reaches 100, I have to stop the run because I can't measure the gas anyway, and I don't want a buildup of pressure inside that gas syringe. So I'm going to stop that now. Another way of measuring the rate of a chemical reaction, if a particular reaction generates a good quantity of gas, like the reaction of calcium carbonate marble chips with dilute hydrochloric acid, is to stand the reactant separately on the top of a balance, but remembering all the different pieces of apparatus that will be needed for that. Then to add the marble chips to the hydrochloric acid here, press start on the stopwatch, um, and then pop some cotton wool into the neck of the flask. So I'll sort through that in a moment. So the order of proceedings will be add the marble chips, start the stopwatch and put the cotton wool in as quickly as possible. Here goes. Okay, so you can perhaps see on the balance top now that that mass is already decreasing over time as the carbon dioxide gas is escaping from the flask. Notice that the um, cotton wool is there to allow the gas to escape, but to prevent, you see how, how fast this is bubbling, and it's spitting little bits of solution around the edge of the flask. So that just prevents any of that solution just spitting out of the flask, which of course would itself contribute to a mass decrease. So it's very much possible to record the change in mass over time and produce a rate of reaction analysis on that.